Hi everyone, it's Ben from Trek It, and we've got Harry behind the camera as always. And we're here at the lovely Gospel Pass, just up from Hay on Wye. Uh, so hopefully we found another nice view for you. I'm back on my tump that I quite like to stand on. Um, and in today's video, we're going to go through a bit of an inside look into the Arcteryx Alpha AR jacket, which is a, a lovely Gore-Tex Pro waterproof jacket from Arcteryx. And it's about all the outdoor mountain jacket that you will ever need. So over the course of this video, we'll go through some of its features, its fit, what it's made from, and any other little thoughts we like about the jacket. So stay tuned. So first off, what is the Alpha AR? The Alpha AR from Arcteryx is a, primarily a waterproof jacket. Uh, the AR in the name stands for all round, and that kind of gives you an idea of where Arcteryx placed this jacket. Their Alpha series of waterproof jackets is their sort of high end, more climbing and alpinism focus and the AR is their all-round version of that. Because of that, it means that it will keep you protected from the car right the way up to the steepest climbs and back down again. It'll be nice and warm and waterproof um, and free of wind and things like that. Um, so Arcteryx made this jacket to be as durable as it needed to be in the areas where it's gonna see the most, most wear and most use, but they've kept it nice and lightweight compared to say the SV. And there are a few differences that I will explain a little bit later in the video about it but essentially you get a, a nice heavy duty waterproof jacket that is still really nice and breathable and lightweight when you need it the most when you're doing your fun alpine stuff. So what exactly is the Arcteryx Alpha AR made from? Arcteryx helpfully for obviously the purposes of this video um, have split the outer fabric into two slightly different colors. This glitch colorway makes it quite easy to spot the differences. So the outer fabric of this jacket has been split into 80 denier in the darker gray areas of a nice reinforced nylon and then 40 denier in the main body in this sort of lighter gray. They've done that for a few reasons. The main areas that have got the heavier duty, heavier weight um, 80 denier fabric are the areas where you're likely to see more abrasion, just generally more use. So if you're carrying a pack, if you're climbing, things like that, or just generally on top of the hood and on top of the shoulders is where you're likely going to see a little bit more wear in the jacket. So when you're reaching up and grabbing and scraping things, if you're scrambling, climbing, doing what you're doing, keeps it more abrasion resistant. And then on the inside, you can see the difference on the sleeves here and also in the main body where you don't need quite as much protection. 40 denier is still plenty durable, but it also means that the main body of the jacket can be a little bit more breathable as well, which helps keep this jacket a little bit lighter weight and just generally you a little bit more comfortable in it. Underneath that layer of the, of the nylon, whether it be the 18 denier or the 40, you have a Gore-Tex Pro membrane. Again, Arcteryx have used two slightly different versions of the Gore-Tex Pro membrane for this. And if you'd like to find out a little bit more about the changes to Gore-Tex Pro, it's been split out a little bit from Gore-Tex Pro of old. Um, Harry will pop a link to that video somewhere on the screen um, in this corner, he's just pointing to me. So it'll be over here. If it's over here, then that, that's Harry's fault because he just pointed in this direction. Um, so essentially, on, underneath the outer layer of this jacket, you then, in the reinforced areas, have Gore-Tex Pro Most Rugged or Most Durable, um, which, as the name might suggest, is a slightly more durable version of the membrane. Copes a little bit better with the abrasion side of things, so where you're going to be rubbing up, it will be a little bit more durable. Also means that it is super waterproof, as waterproof as Gore-Tex Pro has always been. Uh, so a nice high hydrostatic head on that. And then in the main body, in the lighter grey area on the glitch colourway, as I mentioned before, you've then got Gore-Tex Pro Most Breathable. Clues in the name, a little bit more breathable and will help you keep a little bit more comfortable, but you still get that high hydrostatic head keeping you nice and waterproof. We'll move on to show you the inside of the jacket because there's something interesting that goes on there, um, which will help with the breathability. But for that, Harry's asked me that I've got to do a little spin and we're going to make some magic happen. So I'm going to do a little pirouette. Hopefully I look nice and dignified doing that, but I know Harry will do a terrible job of making me look dignified for your amusement. Uh, so the reason we turn the jacket inside out is just to show you one, the third layer to this Gore-Tex three layer jacket, which is the nylon backing material here. Um, but mainly it's to show some of the paneling that Arcteryx have used on this jacket to help with articulation and movement and things like that, because this jacket is obviously designed for quite a fun outdoor activity where you're going to be reaching above your head and doing all things like that. So you've got more panelling. More panelling means that you have to stitch areas together. And if you were just to leave those areas uncovered without any seam tape on them, you'd then have a lot of holes in your Gore-Tex jacket, which you don't really want if you want to stay dry. 
Uh, so Arcteryx have done something quite clever with this jacket and across some of their other range. They have developed a uh, seam tape that is as thin as they can make it and then run that with the patterning across the jacket. So you can see some of the stripes and lines on here. Harry will again get a bit of a close-up of this so that we can get a bit of, bit of a better idea on it. But they've used seam taping that's about eight millimeters wide as much as possible, um, which helps keep you nice and dry, but it also minimizes the hit to the breathability because anywhere that you've got tape underneath that tape in order to stick it to the rest of the jacket, you obviously have glue and the glue is non-permeable, it's not breathable. So keeping that taping to a minimum, keeping them as small as possible, leaves a maximum surface area for the Gore-Tex to do its job and keep you nice and dry and uh, the jacket nice and breathable. They also have used on areas where there's going to be a little bit more pressure and a little bit more friction around the jacket with movement. They've used these circular reinforcements. So if the line of the fabric changes, um, it will then help reinforce that area and stop the seam tape from lifting. But you can see across all of this jacket that the seam taping is nice and small, which keeps this jacket really nice and breathable. All of the Gore-Tex Pro loveliness has been complemented by a PFC-free DWR on the outside of the jacket. That's a chemical coating that keeps the jacket nice and water repellent. So light rain and water will just bead straight off the jacket, allowing it to not soak in and keep the jacket nice and breathable. That is something that will wear off over time, but that's where a little bit of care and maintenance on the jacket really pays dividends for keeping your waterproof Gore-Tex jacket in really tip-top condition. So what are the features of the Alpha AR? Primarily, it's a waterproof jacket, so it is, of course, waterproof, um, but we'll start at the top and we'll work our way down. The Alpha AR is really designed for alpinism, sort of climbing, scrambling, that sort of thing in mind, so a lot of the features will be tailored a little bit more to that. Makes it a little bit less suitable as a general purpose walking jacket. Not to say you can't use it for that, but some of the features are designed with sort of harness compatibility, and climbing in mind. So we'll start with the hood right the way at the top and then we'll work our way down. As always, Harry will throw in some detail shots so that we can see a little bit more about what's going on that I'm talking about. So the hood is a full climbing helmet compatible storm hood with three points of adjustment on it, which is great for when you're not using it with a helmet. Um, you've got the cohesive cord, cord locks, uh, the cohesive, um, they are cohesive cord locks. The cohesive cord locks, I'm going to say cohesive cord lock just one more time just to really seal the deal. But those cord locks are designed to be nice and easy to use with gloves for adjusting the hood. Uh, so you've got two big buttons, one on either side of the collar, so that you can then adjust and cinch out some of that volume from the hood. The brim of that hood has a laminated stiffened peak to it, so it will stand up nicely over the top of a climbing helmet, but when you're not using it, it will still hold a stiff enough peak that it will allow rain to bead off without it sort of dribbling down straight into your face, which no one really wants, um, or anyone that does, I don't really want to be friends with. Um, but with, with the hood, Arcteryx have also done something really cool that's a nice quality of life feature if you are using it in the sort of alpine mountain environments that are expecting you to use it, and that is that they've included a Reco reflector in the brim uh, that I mentioned before. Reco is something that is used widely by search and rescue teams and it can help locate you in the mountains in case of avalanche, things like that. Obviously, it is just sort of a safety backup, a personal um, GPS beacon and more avalanche safety kit would be much more useful, but Reco is nice to have as a little add on there. You'll see it in a lot of ski wear and a lot of mountain wear, which is a nice feature that Arcteryx have thrown in there that you won't even know about otherwise. Moving on down a little bit, I did mention the collar briefly that's got those cohesive cord lock adjusters. There it is one more time. I don't know how many that is now, but it's probably getting on for double figures. Um, but it's got a nice tall collar that's built into the hood. So you get really nice protection when it's all zipped all the way up to the top. And you get a little nice micro suede um, fleecy patch on the backer so that it doesn't rub up and, and annoy your chin when you're wearing it. It's all lovely and cozy. Uh, because this is the sort of jacket that you're probably going to be tucked up in quite a lot with the hood up because the sort of conditions you're going to be using it in will make that life a little bit easier. Moving down the jacket, first thing you'll notice is we've got two Napoleon pockets. Um, those pockets are in place there. They're big enough for gloves, maps, anything you like. I personally keep the most important thing that I've got here right now, which is my jelly beans. I remembered them this time so Harry didn't have to. Um, but it's a useful pocket to, to keep quick access things in, like potentially a map and compass, a spare set of gloves or hats, something that's easy to get to. 
The reason they are Napoleon style pockets up in the, in the center of the chest line here, and they also sit a little bit higher than other pockets is so that they are then harness compatible, whether that be a rucksack or more likely a climbing harness. So the pockets are still usable and they don't get in the way of any of the function of a harness. That does then mean that you've got nothing to really to put your hands in, but realistically, when you're using this jacket, you shouldn't be putting your hands in your pockets because you're going to be too busy grabbing onto things and doing all sorts of cool stuff. Otherwise, with this jacket, there are a few other features that are really rather nice. So the cut of this jacket has been designed with climbing and alpinism in mind. So you can reach up over the top of your head and there will be sort of minimal lift of the jacket due to the, the articulation that they put into the sleeves. You also have nice, big, vented pit zips that run sort of from, from your mid chest right the way down to near your elbows. So you can vent this jacket while still keeping yourself nice and dry. Um, and all of these have lovely YKK zippers on them, which don't have the traditional gates that you would normally have on zips, thanks to um, Arc'teryx's new zip technology, which means that the zips can be a little bit lower profile, but they have still put nice plastic toggles on them that can be used with gloves. Personally, when I've used them with gloves, I have found them to be a little bit finicky if you're using them with big gloves, but if you're using them with something that's slightly more dexterous, you won't have an issue. Um, and grand scheme of things, you won't be fiddling around with your pockets too much in those sort of situations. It's sort of chuck stuff in them and forget about them, so it shouldn't be too much to worry about. One thing that I have noticed about this jacket, and it's very much a personal preference thing, mainly because I have the bladder of a child, is I would prefer a two-way zip on a jacket like this. Um, the idea with this jacket is obviously you chuck it on at the start of the day, you put your harness on over the top of it, and you just forget about it because you're in the sort of conditions that your harness is going to stay on all day and you want to stay dry and protected. So it's not too much of an issue, but I just like it as a little extra feature. So if I'm belaying or something like that, that I wasn't wearing the jacket, I can chuck it on a little bit easier, but it's no biggie. You just chuck it on before your harness and go about your day. Other things to mention, we do have laser cut um, adjusters on the cuffs. So you've got a laser cut adjustment there that is then Velcro, so you can cinch out around a glove cuff or just take out some of the volume of the sleeves and then the only other thing is we've got those same cohesive um, adjusters on the bottom hem so you can adjust and cinch in the bottom hem if you're trying to keep yourself nice and protected seal in a little bit more heat but also stop any ingress up underneath the jacket or if it gets a bit windy um, so you've got those same cohesive adjusters there to really be able to cinch out the volume the only other pocket worth mentioning is one that's a little bit more suitable for valuables. So we've got one pocket on the inside, so we'll have to undo the jacket. And on the inside here, crucially, Arcteryx have coloured it in a nice complementary colour to the rest of the jacket, but it also means it pops nicely for this video. But this one is just a little, little accessory pocket on the inside, which is the one that we would recommend keeping valuables and electronics in, purely because, as with anything that is waterproof, the only part of a jacket that is not waterproof are the zips on it. They're highly, highly water resistant, but they can't be called fully waterproof because they can't guarantee there won't be some water ingress. So any valuable items that can be susceptible to moisture damage, i.e. your phone, potentially a GPS unit, or paper maps and things like that. Probably won't fit a map in this pocket, but maps you don't have to worry about, they're usually laminated. We'd recommend keeping them on the inside or keep your valuables in a dry bag and then you can pop them in one of the outside pockets. How does it fit? Like this. Um, the Alpha AR has been designed with um, alpinism in mind, so it's potentially a little bit roomier than other waterproof jackets because you might be wearing a little bit more underneath. But I would normally wear a size large in any of the other Arcteric shells, and that is no exception here. This one is large. It allows a little bit more room for a few layers underneath. So today I have a long sleeve base layer and then a lightweight mid layer on. And there's still enough room if I wanted to for sort of a heavier weight insulating piece or a sort of a heavier fleece if I need to. Um, but the idea with this jacket is that you are going to be in some challenging conditions. So it's got a little bit more room in than, say, your average walking jacket. Uh, but it also means then that you get a little bit more articulation and movement. So when you're moving around the climbing, the jacket moves really well with you and provides a little bit more coverage. I am six foot three and I've got a 42 inch chest um, and this jacket fits me very well. And it is also a little bit longer than some other walking jackets. Um, so you get a little bit more rear coverage with the dropped hem. 
and the drop tem comes in on this size jacket at just shy of 80 centimeters i think it's 79.5 so it is nice and long for all you tall individuals out there this is a jacket that works and keeps you dry um, a few other jackets that i've tried they're not really designed for for me i know i'm not average height but a few other jackets i've tried haven't quite been long enough and you just end up with some some soggy trousers which isn't quite as fun um, but this jacket takes care of that it's a nice length and provides enough coverage but it's not going to be super long if you are a little bit closer to average height or just a little bit shorter than i am other than that it just fits really well and moves well with you and it's just really nice and comfortable you don't find that it inhibits movement um, if you're going to be wearing some really heavyweight insulation underneath it you might need to adjust the sizing a little bit but this jacket should be fairly accommodating if you buy it in your normal size if you're not sure how to choose your outer layer or would just like a little bit more information on where to go with that we do have a helpful video that harry's going to put somewhere on the screen here um, he isn't pointing this time so i'm just going to say that it's going to be on the screen and do that a little bit more with my hands um, so we will post a link to that on the screen now and if you'd like to know more information about this particular jacket buy it online see what other colors we've got there will also be a link to that in the description of the video um, other than that Hope you enjoyed this video with a little bit of an insight into the Arctorex Alpha AR and we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.